Have you seen Down for Sound recently? They've got some crazy models. JP77 is one of them. It does 2,000 watts on the subchannel and is a 7 channel amplifier. That's right, 120 by 6 plus 1,000, no, 2,000 watts on the subwoofer. Woo! I know some seeing this video may ask, 7 channel amplifier for a car? What in the heck? Why would you need 7 channels for a car audio amplifier? Well, the truth is a lot of people like to go active on their front end stage. What that means is they'll have a mid bass, a mid range, and a tweeter, all with their own individual channels. That's six channels there, friends. Then we have some left over for the subwoofers. Or you could have actively powered front stage with mid and a tweeter, and then have some rear fill as well as the subwoofers. Now, seven channel amplifiers go way back to like the mid 1990s with this Blaupunk V7000. Pulled this one up out of the old school stereo archives. $670 back in 1995 equates to about $1,310 in 2022. This amp was rated 40 by 4 plus 80 by 2 plus 20 by 1. Actually had a center channel. Additionally, Soundstream had an amp called the DaVinci. This was a special edition amplifier, gold plated, came with all kind of fancy stuff. This one now in 1997 retailed for $2,500, which equates to about $4,650 in 2022. Amazing, amazing amplifier here. They didn't make very many of them, but uh, yeah, these are highly sought after. This was rated 50 by four plus 100 by two plus 200 by one for the sub channel. Now Phoenix Gold also had an amplifier in 2002, the Titanium 900.7, which was their seven channel amplifier. So we looked this one up as well in the old school stereo archives and found it right here. And the price was $14.99 in 2002. That equates to about $2,500 in today's money. This one was rated 50 watts by 5 plus 125 by 2. Now, not to get too deep into the matter, but Phoenix Gold also had the Zen 9 in 2019. Very limited edition, $3,000. Only 100 of these were made. They're all gone now. They're all accounted for. But this one was rated 75 by 6 plus 150 by 2 plus 1,000 by 1. Very impressive. Now, not to forget Zapco, 2005. They had a 7 channel as well. But check out these screw down terminals. Oh my God, I could not get over that. But this one did, did have RCA as well as balanced inputs. And this one we found in the 2005 directory, $699, which equates to about $1,070 today. It was rated 50 watts by 4 plus 25 by 2, and then 400 or 600 watts on the sub channel. Now, fast forward here to the end of 2022. Who knows when you're watching this? But Down for Sound introduced the JP. 77 and let's unbox this and see what's inside this is a seven channel amplifier we're going to get into the ratings here in just a little bit this is a one of the beautiful blue colors it does come with an owner's manual of course which goes over the features uh, tells you about connecting the amplifier it does have the cat 5 e 10 pin style connector as well as the down for sound bass knob which looks like a little amplifier very cool it's aluminum has power protect, clipping LED, does your voltage, your temperature, everything. Now this one also comes with some pigtails. As you can imagine, having an amplifier with so many inputs, you're going to need pigtails. We'll get to that in just a minute. Overall, here is the beautiful blue anodized color. This is one of my favorite colors of the Down for Sound Amps. Maybe not the favorite, but definitely one of the favorite. At the time of this video, this amp was available for under $800. So check a link in the video description if you want to check it out. Here you can see on the far left, we have the inputs. Again, these are pigtails going to Tiffany style RCAs. And the way these connect up is you just have to plug it in. So it's like Glade, plug it in, plug it in. See, you didn't hear the click, but it made a click. Also, we've got a lot of other stuff going on here. We have a mode switch, two channel, seven channel. We're gonna get back to that because there is an issue with that I found. Beside that, channels one and two, we have a gain and a high pass. There is no low pass filter on channel one and two, also no times 10. Further down the amp, channels three and four, we have high pass filter, 20 hertz to 800 hertz, on or off, low pass, 50 to 800 on or off. So you can also band pass using channels three, four, five, and six. We're gonna show here, which are the same settings, gain, high pass filter, low pass filter. There is no times 10 factor, Again, we're going to talk about that later. 
Lastly, we have the connections for the subwoofer and the adjustments, including gain, subsonic 10 hertz to 50 hertz, low pass filter 250 down to 35. Also the remote base connection. It goes into that 10 pin wire, goes into your base remote knob. Then we have power protecting clip. The clip is for the sub channel is what I was told. On the opposite end of the amplifier, we have the connections for the power as well as the speakers. Oversized zero gauge inputs for power and ground. Also to have the remote terminal there in the middle. Then we have six channels, channel one, two, and then three and four are underneath on the bottom. And five and six are over on the top right. And all these channels are bridgeable. So you can actually have a three, five, or seven channel amplifier. It's the outside terminals here you can see, positive on the left, negative on the right. The sub channel has two positives and two negatives. These are all eight gauge connections for the speaker terminal. Now, as far as dimensions go, 2.7 for the height, 9.4 for the width, 20.5 for the length, which is not bad for an amp of this rating, which includes four ohms, 120 by six, two ohms, 190 by six, or four ohm bridge, 350 by three, sub channel, 1000 watts at four ohms, 1600 at two ohms, 2000 at one ohm. Now my favorite part of any of these amp videos, of course, is the amp dyno test. If you haven't seen these before on the left side, you'll see the RMS power in watts. In the middle, you'll see the ohm load. On the right, you will see the voltage of the dyno. We'll give you all that information as we show the different tests. Now, this is a six, seven channel amp, so we're gonna test six channels, but have all the channels loaded. And you can see here, I've got a ton of resistors. I had four of the 1000 watt resistors, and then I had an older bank that I made before that had 200 watt resistors. So I had enough here, they're actually in parallel, so it's 400 for each of those channels. So I have plenty of resistors to make sure all the channels are loaded down. Now, four ohm, six channel, it's rated 120 by six. We're gonna show two of the channels here on the dyno, but all the other channels are also loaded at four ohms. Here we go, certified test up to 1% distortion. And we easily get the 120, we actually get 160 at 14.32. Just for you guys, we did allow the voltage to drop below 14.4, so you're not complaining too high voltage. Uncertified up to clipping, we get exactly the same thing. 161 watts is very good. Now let's reset the dyno here for the dynamic burst test. These tests are at one kilohertz because these are the front channels. These are the ones you're probably gonna be using uh, with your mids and highs. 188, oop, 190 and 188. So nicely done there. Two ohm, six channels rated 190 watts by six at 14.4. Certified test as always is our first test. Let's see what we get here. Easily over 190, 280 and 283. So about 281 watts times six, plus the sub channel, which we haven't got to yet. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Now let's reset the dyno for the uncertified run. Takes us up to clipping. See if we get any more. Virtually the same, 280 and 284. So about 282 per channel. This amp is getting really close in the channels which uh, you know, with some of the multi-channel amps, you don't see the numbers get quite as close as this one does. So that's very good overall. That means the component tolerances are very close. 357, 359, it's got some dynamic juice. Now let's bridge these main channels and try it at four ohms where it's rated 350 by three. You're gonna see two of those three channels here. The other ones are on the resistors. Certified test again first. Can we get that 350? Yeah, I get a little bit more, get quite a bit more, around 490 watts times two. So that will be 490 times three, including the other channel we're not showing here. Uncertified up to clipping. Can we get over 500? Right at it. I'd say about 493 by three. Plenty of juice in this amplifier. Dynamic, now as we saw before, dynamic, pretty good dynamic headroom here. And as you can see, almost 600 watts times three. That's nearly double the rated power. Nice dynamics. Now we've seen the six channels kind of blow us away with the power output. Did plenty of power in each of those channels, well overrated. Now let's try the sub channel. Now this one, uh, we're gonna try first at four ohms. It's rated a thousand watts. But again, we have all the other channels loaded this amp does have separate power supply for the sub channel, so that may not be necessary, but we do it anyway. Certified test first, 1183, but 14.79.
That's too much voltage there, D. Let's turn it down a little bit for the haters that say that's too much voltage. All right, we can try it again. Lower that voltage down a little bit. Certified, four ohms on the sub channel. 1130 at 14.52. Next up, we'll try the uncertified test at four ohms on the sub channel. Rated 1000 watts. Again, over 1200, but 14.74. Safe to say our voltage is just a slightly over the 14.4, but uh, no problem getting to a thousand watts here at four ohms. Dynamically, here we go. Get close to 1200. Yep, there we go, 1205 at 14.75. Now let's load the sub-channel down to two ohms, or it's rated for, uh, 1600 watts at 14.4 volts. See what we get here, certified test again is first. Voltage may be a little high on the first run, 1759 at 14.7. So let's crank that voltage down a little bit and try it again. Here we go, rated 1600 watts at 14.4. We get 1666 at 14.34. Get out of here, devil, not today. This is not a Mickey Mouse program. All right, Goofy the Big Dummy, let's set it to uncertified here for the two ohm test. Again, 1600 watts is the rating. And it keeps counting up over 1900, 1916, took a little trip. 14.58 volts. Let's reset that dyno one more time here for the dynamic pulse tone at 40 hertz. Can we bust 2KW? Not far, 1966. Good year for somebody. Oh, it jumped to 1967. Sorry, whoever's born in 1966. Let's switch to one ohm on the sub channel. Rated 2,000 watts at 14.4. Certified test. Let's run that 40 hertz track. Play that beautiful beam footage. Here we go. 2182, 14.6. But big D, that's too much voltage. Crank it down a little bit. Let's see it again with some more quote unquote realistic voltage. All right, here you go. Certified test, lower voltage. What do we get? 2,045 watts at 14.09. All right. Now let's switch to the uncertified test. Man, I'm tired of all this talking for this dyno run. Holy moly, this is a lot of different tests. Smash me a thumbs up if you like all these tests. Good Lord. Uncertified 2592, almost 2600 at 14.43. This is insane for a seven channel amplifier that has this much power across all the different channels. Dynamically, look at this. 30, oops, jumped to 3873 at 14.58. Now, I'll be honest, I saw this and I'm like, hold on, that's gotta be a fluke. This can't be right. I gotta change it. So let's go back, actually not even go back. Let's just reset the dyno here and let's rerun this track again, cause that had to be something wrong. There's no way there's almost 4,000 watts on the sub channel dynamically. But um, yeah, it actually backed that up and actually gave just a little bit more power. 39.13 at 14.6 volts. Damn shit, bro. All right, friends, I have to admit, I've never tested a seven channel amplifier before, and this took a lot of work to do this test. And uh, yeah, I mean, the amp did its rated power plus some at every different load we threw at it. We had all the channels loaded down with the resistors. Not all the times you see amp tests, people do that, but I try to make sure I do that for every test. And yeah, overall impressive. I mean, holy moly, this thing is crazy powerful for one amp that has seven channels with this much total power. Now I know what you guys are asking next. Ooh, how does it sound? Well, I played around with it for a while with my setup and I'll be honest, it sounded good, but I don't have the proper three-way setup that's needed to do this with the active front stage and all that. So I'm gonna hold that off for another day. But uh, let's talk about what's inside next. Seven channels of beef, yep, pretty much. Again, it has acrylic bottom like all the other JP amps. Let's take off that acrylic bottom. We'll take a closer look at the amp here. And yeah, you can see all the different channels here. You can see the transformers, the chokes, as well as the capacitors. Now the first set of capacitors here are 2200 microfarad 35 volt, that's for the power supply filtering. 3300 microfarad 63 volts, that's for the main channels, the six channel. 
the sub-channel 2200 microfarad 80 volt. Now ask my friend Sam over at Bear Vids, take a look at this board and tell me what you think. Yeah, this actually looks like a really nice amp. The substage should be pretty powerful. Um, don't usually get like uh, amps, you know, multi-channel amps with a dedicated sub-channel that's actually got any guts to it. So that looks pretty cool. Now let's move on to the pros and cons. Things I like, things I think could be better, at least things to be aware of. The pros, straight out of South Korea, nice quality. Rated Power Plus on all the channels, oversized, zero gauge inputs. Tiffany baby, even though they're on pigtail dongles, they're still Tiffany style RCAs. Remote base for the seventh channel. Use flexibility. Yes, you can use it in many different configurations. Very nice. Now the things that could be better. If you want to run just two channels, you have to switch it over to the seven channel mode instead of the two channel. That's kind of backwards to me. Uh, it also has the pigtails for RCAs, just doesn't have enough room to have that many inputs on the amp. Does not have a tweeter crossover. What I mean by that is there's nothing over 800 hertz. There is no X10 here. So you do will need an external DSP to run active three-way, but I assume most people who get an amp like this are gonna use an external DSP. The manual is lacking info. It doesn't talk about the switches, doesn't talk about a lot of the inputs, all that stuff. Also, this may be a limited edition, so make sure you go ahead and pick up one if you want one. There you have the test, JP77. This was sent to me for this test by Down For Sound. I am an affiliate. As you guys know, I give you the honest review here. Also show you the actual power. If you'd like to see me and Sam talk about this amp some more, let me know in the video comments below. Till next time, this is Big D. I'm out of here. As I mentioned earlier in the video, use these braking resistors, these 1000 watt four ohm resistors. Had four at the time of the video. I've actually bought four more since then. You can see they measure 4.3 ohms of resistance. But I also want to talk about this other amp that I didn't really show in the video. The bottom right. This Elites by Zuki. Check out that joker. Look how long it is. 55 inches long. Holy moly. You know how them sound waves go? Mm -hmm. Shit my way, uh, or the highway, and in the driveway.